Hey guys, so you might remember this from my Legendary Shards video, but there are a couple updates to it that I want to mention. Right now, materials are needed more than ever. Even if you choose the Tribute, you might still want some of the other perks of the Tribute Hall. And that costs currency. Recently, Bungie added Clan XP to Forges, even for failing. That means if you have Core Hound unlocked for your clan, you can get 7 Enhancement Cores from the Clan XP Milestone per character. Plus, some powerful loot and XP from it, and completing Forges gives you a little bit of XP. Meaning free XP, free clan XP, free cores, free planetary materials, legendary shards if you turn those materials in, or convert them at the spider for something else. This is an easy, get rich scenario for people that don't have time. And it's not against the terms of service. It's not hurting any players. But it does keep your console running. The forge failing method has been around since the forges came out. You used to get the lore papers from Gofanon and Donning and Revelry materials. Bungie has not commented, patched, or banned anyone for being AFK in a forge, and this is why. You do not need your controller or keyboard. You do not need a macro. Just make sure your console settings aren't set to turn off after a few hours of inactivity. A lot of players have said, AFK players ruin the game, why would you support that? I'm not. I don't support AFK and Strikes, Gambit, or whatever. This does not hurt any players or work in any other activities. If a player that you matchmake in your forge tries to complete it, the timer will be extended, and if that timer goes on for a while, you'll hit the AFK protection and you will be kicked to orbit. If you are hurting other players, you will be kicked to orbit for being AFK. That is the failsafe of this method. If you're not hurting any players, the forge will fail before you're kicked to orbit. What makes you so sure you won't hurt other players? Because for this to work, you need to lower your power level. This means buying the gear from Hawthorne, the 10 power starter gear, or the gear from Bright Engrams, even the Halloween masks. Lower your power level as far as you can go. You want to be around 400 power to be safe. Then load up the Volander Forge on the EDZ to get Dusklight Shards, or go to Gofanon on Nessus to get Data Lattice. You can get thousands of these per day by doing nothing. Matchmaking is based on your power level, so if you're under-recommended, you will matchmake with people that are not able to complete the forge. It fails, it starts you in a new one. There is a rare occasion where if you get matchmade in a lobby and someone with a slow connection joins in late, it will extend the forge long enough to kick you for being AFK. It's rare, but it can happen. So step one, lower your power level. Step 2, load up a forge. Step 3, walk away. That's it. You can turn off your controller and your TV if you want to. When you wake up, there will be a stack of materials in your Postmaster. You normally get 4 materials per forge, but there is a trick for more materials submitted by Dispense. The Ghost Perk, EDZ Scanner, and Nessus Scanner have a chance to give you 1 or 2 extra materials from each completion. So make sure to have an EDZ Scanner Ghost in the Volander, or a Nessus Scanner in Gofanon. An easy way to get a Nessus Scanner perk is to buy the Future Craft Shell from Season 5. While the source says from Black Armory Bounties, you used to get it from successful Forge completions. It costs 1000 Glimmer and 2 Shards, and the only planetary perks it can have are from Nessus, making it real easy to get a Nessus Scanner. Dismantling one gives half of its cost back, so it's not a big waste either. Even if you aren't playing, you can still have the game paying you back for those tribute costs. Cheese forever, Guardian.